All right guys, this common tendency here is for the individual that doesn't use enough left hand or doesn't use enough non-dominant hand with their two-handed backhand. Um, see a lot of tennis players coming in using their two-handed backhand or um, see a lot of players uh, who maybe just aren't strong enough with using one hand on the backhand side so they want to use that that uh, non-dominant hand kind of as a stabilizer and th then also too, to, to get some easy power. Uh, so a couple things here. Um, looking at it from a technique lens, um, you know, if I, obviously I'm a, I'm a righty here. Um, so my right hand as I'm, as I'm lighting up for two-handed backhand is more so just gonna be there to kind of hang on for the ride. It's, it's just more so there for a, for a guider. Um, as I put my left hand on, my left hand, or my, sorry, my left arm is going to be my main user. So I have my user and then I have my guider just kind of there to, to simply hang on for the ride and know that it's really only hanging on for the ride until about here. And then also too, not letting my non-dominant arm take over. Something to think about as, as well is, uh, I see the right hand starting to use a bit more when it tenses up. Um, so if you find yourself squeezing way too hard with that dominant hand, you're probably going to find yourself using much more right than your left. Or if you see the hands on top of each other, or you know, maybe like the, the right hand is just way too close to the left, um, you're going to find that the right hand is going to start taking over. So think about getting the spacing, think about using this as your user, and then also to recognize that the, the guider is simply just kind of there to hang on for the ride. Yeah, I think the, the really common, um uh, situations where people struggle with this shot is I think they have that what Tyson just talked about uh, totally inverted they're really using their left almost as the guider and the right hand is the main user and when you see that they tend to play it right off their hip and they tend to 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 struggle to get that extension out in front and they're using kind of all their wrist right off their hip rather than turning and engaging from low to high with their legs and getting that extension out. So we want to think of our, our, for right-handers, our right hand as the guider, our left hand is going to be doing most of the work. Um, also, also too, think about uh, if you're dropping and you're finding consistency with your two-handed backhand, you should probably be dinking with your two-handed backhand as well. It kind of goes hand in hand. I know you've kind of dabbled with your two-hander. I think you're obviously like a little different than most people. You, you tend to uh, drop sometimes, sorry, drop with one, sometimes drop with two, and then also to kind of mix that up a little bit from the kitchen line. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be the, the poster child for how difficult that is, to be right. to completely honest right, with yeah. you. Um, I think it's very challenging to go back and forth. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I would say if you're starting out, especially if you're coming from tennis yeah. and you have a two-handed backhand, I would practice using it at all the levels. Use it for your dinking, use it in transition, use it for your drives and your drops. Quick little story, my wife, um, was probably about a 3.5, always had a good forehand, but used a one-handed backhand. It's been about, I don't know, eight or nine months. She decided she really wanted to just switch to two. And I said, if you're gonna switch, switch in every area. And she's a pretty darn good 4.5 now. So just making that one switch from a one-hander to a two-hander and using it everywhere has really benefited her game. I'm gonna be acting as a teacher here. Coach Kyle is gonna be acting as a student. Um, he's going to be hitting in three different zones. We're going to start out at the kitchen line. He's going to hit uh, five dinks with his left hand and then five dinks with two hands. Then he's going to scoot back to the transition zone. Same thing, five dinks with his left, five dinks with both. And then he's going to scoot back to the baseline. Same idea, five third shot drops with his left and then five with two. Okay, I'm going to have you come all the way up here. Nice and easy. Um, I can. I can be using a paddle or, or I can simply just be doing it by hand. Okay, here we go. Nice and easy. Good, there's one. There's two. Three, good. Four, he's keeping the hand positioning nice and still. There's five, let's add two. Okay, Kyle, left arm is taking over, correct? Absolutely. Left arm is using, right is guiding. And I really wanna lock my wrist here too, especially for those of you that can hit good drives with your two-hander. If you're gonna dink with it, you really wanna keep your wrists locked and okay. push from the shoulder. Uh, transition, transition, okay. yep, yep. Um, as you're locking those wrists though, just make sure that that right, uh, that right hand or that right arm is not taking over. Very good. Again, he's getting good height. Good, good, very good. Okay, let's go uh, two hands here, two okay. hands. Okay, same idea. Good, good, beautiful. Making, making contact uh, nice and clean. The ball's nice and shallow. Beautiful, good, good. I'm gonna add a paddle in here, just to speed this up a little sure. bit. Okay, back to the baseline for me, back to the baseline, same thing. Okay, use that left back there. 
Yes, good. Good. He's getting good extension. He's, he's gauging how much pace is coming at him and, and whether he should finish at the first imaginary ball or the second. Uh, two hands here. Oops, sorry. Here yep, go. two hands. Yes, look at that. On the dime. On the dime. Look at the poster child. Good. Up, up, up. Very good. Uh. Good. Let's go one more. Lovely. Okay. Go second progression here. Coach Kyle now is going to be in the transition zone. Um, the, the first progression, he was just working on drops on that non-dominant side. Now he's going to be hitting drives on the non-dominant side. Ready here? Uh, five left-handed drives. Right back at me. Good. There's one. There's two. Good. Sounds nice and clean. Three. Four. And five. Very good. Very good. And, and, and let's just take a look at the technique here real quick. So go ahead and lay it back for us. Okay, so um, something that Kyle and I were kind of talking about earlier was just getting the correct range of motion here. You know, think about as you're lining up for a ground stroke or in, in this scenario, as you're lining up for a two-handed backhand, the butt cap of the paddle needs to be facing at the ball, and then this back tip needs to be either facing at the fence or whatever's back behind you, okay? Go ahead and add that extra hand on. Okay. okay, brings the extra hand on, unit turn, set position, very good. This arm is his user, uh, weight's going forward, rotating the hips, belly button's facing at the target, hitting all three imaginary balls, and then he's releasing that back hit, very nice. Um, so let's go two-handed back in from here, cool. here ready go. here, back at me. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, add a paddle. Sure. Okay, so same go. thing here, I can add a paddle um, and just volley it back. Good. My here we go, here we go. Add a paddle, volley it back. Watch, watch that ball by your foot, sorry. I got it. Watch that ball. Ready? Okay, good. Back in the baseline yep. for me. So now, um, he's only going to be using two hands at the baseline. He's not going to use one. Um, so same thing. Um, now, uh, with, with this progression, let's just keep the rally going. Okay. Okay, lower levels. Um, you, can, you can feed one, feed one and then trap one. Um, higher levels, I would, say, um, I would say feed, and then just try to keep the rally, keep the rally going, okay? So you're looking to volley maybe cooperatively a little bit? For sure, yep, yep. Volley me deep, but not really trying to, to do too much with it. Yep, yep, so let's go lower level here. First, I'm gonna trap. Good, again. Weight's going forward, beautiful, good. Loading off the back foot. Okay, now this is higher level. I'm gonna keep the rally going. Nice and easy. Okay, I'm just gonna volley back to his backhand. Ah. Ah. Okay, again. Ah. Hmm. Ah, sorry. Good, good. Okay guys, last progression here of our uh, two-handed backhand drill. Um, Coach Kyle is gonna be at the baseline. Uh, so, we, so we've talked about, uh, first progression was uh, simply being selective with playing soft with your two-handed backhand. Second progression was simply uh, uh, being situational with driving your two-handed backhand. And then third progression, now we're going to intertwine the soft game and, and the drive uh, with that two-handed backhand. Okay? So uh, ball at the baseline, it's going to be a drive. I'm going to volley a little shorter. Second ball is going to be a drop. But just all in all, whether uh, I volley deep or short, Kyle has to alternate his drive and drop combo. Yeah. Good. I'm being, I'm being very cooperative here. I'm trying to make Kyle better. This drill is not about me at all. Good, 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 good. Drive. Yes. Drive, good, good, I like it, I like it, good. I'm giving Kyle plenty of time here, good. Okay, look, look at the difference, so with this drive, compared to the drop. Drive, drive, he's closing his stance. On the drive, he's closing his stance. Um, he's getting the paddle back a little deeper. He's really having a lot of focus on that back foot and getting his weight going forward. He's, he's just being a lot more aggressive with his weight transfer. On the drop, as you can see, uh, he's more so keeping his stance open. There's, there's not as much focus with, with the weight transfer. Uh, but, it, but just keep in mind that 
uh, when you have time, always be looking to close the stance on the drive. When you have less time, be, be looking to open your stamps. And you should never be driving a two and a backhand if you have less time. Anytime you find yourself in a position where you're in an open stance, you should always be going to a drop. One thing that works for me, especially um, going from the drive to the drop, if you look at my paddle positioning, I lay it back for the drive, but when I'm getting prepared for the drop, I like to put my paddle down um, because I know that's gonna give me the most up and down shape. It's a lift. I wanna get my body and the paddle face under the ball to be able to provide that lift. I'm not as concerned about that when I'm going for the drive initially. Okay guys, uh, Joe recap here. So uh, the first progression was a little elementary, um, but still plenty of value there. Um, we had three different zones. We had the uh, kitchen, the transition, and the baseline. As you saw there, Coach Kyle um, had to hit 10 balls in each area. First progression was he had to hit five dinks with his left hand and then five dinks with both hands or with that two-handed backhand. And then same scenario, he had to scoot back to the transition zone, do the same thing, and then also to match those 10 balls at the baseline. Second progression was he was more so looking to speed up, uh, try to uh, work on the technique behind the drive. Uh, so he started out in the transition zone. Uh, he drove five with his left hand and then drove five with two hands. And then we put him at the baseline. In that scenario, lower levels, when Kyle was back at the baseline, um, I, I would feed, he was driving, and then I was trapping. So it was in more in a controlled manner, higher level in that scenario. Um, I was keeping the rally going. Anytime Kyle was driving, I was volleying back. Last progression there of our, of our drills was the drive drop combo. Um, I was being cooperative, uh, but know that this drill is more so wrapped around the student, not the teacher. My job was to try to volley deep, um, but Kyle had to alternate uh, a, a drop and then a drive with that two in the back end. Okay guys, game here. It's going to be regular scoring, no rally scoring, regular scoring. Um, I'm starting out at the kitchen line, Coach Kyle starting out at the baseline. My job is to feed a return. Um, it's going to be fairly deep. It's not going to be a competitive feed. Kyle's job is uh, he's got to drive the first one and then drop the second one, but it's going to be on his non-dominant side. So he's going to have to drive the two-handed backhand and then drop the two-handed backhand and then play the point out. Um, something fun here is that you'll actually get to see myself using a two-handed backhand in this game. Why? Because it's regular scoring. So I'm just going to let you know it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Ready here? All right, here we go. Okay, rock and roll. 0-0. Yeah. Uh, zero, zero. If, and, and, and also, too, we're going to keep the theme of if I can let a ball go long, I would get two points. Um, obviously, if Kyle were to lose the point as a server, it would be a side out. Now he's coming in, and then I would scoot back to the baseline. Okay, rock and roll. Bring it, buddy. Drive, drop, and we're playing it out. Oh, and he gets two. And he gets two. Uh, I would consider that a bailout. Uh, it's been been a six hour day of, of doing film. <laughs> Finish the point. Uh, get it know, I'm not gonna lie, six hour day of doing film, so I'm starting to speed up a bit more. Um, but I will be much more disciplined. Uh, zero, two. All right, here we go. Okay, okay. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take All right. it. All right, two, zero. Oh, God. All right. Okay, zero, two. Uh, 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 oh, I thought I'd throw in the two. You know, okay, here we go. The drill. Here we go. Zero two for two zero. Uh, 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 nice. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, two one. Yeah. Two one. Well played. God's bad. Jeez. Hit it. Here we go. <laughs> one two. Uh, that's pretty good. Oh, thank you. Good job. So Kyle, so we're obviously trying to play this ball and trying to more so kind of cheat over to, to play this ball as a two-handed backhand and then as a drop with our two-handed backhand yeah, as well. Yeah, I think maybe it's more extreme than what we would do right. in a real match, but we're wanting to work on that differentiation between what does it feel like to drive with two versus half volley or dink yeah. um, and, and work our way up softly on every subsequent shot. Like so we're it. gonna shade over, um, but just know that you're gonna get the most out of this drill uh, doing it this way, or excuse okay. me, this game. Here we go. Two, one. Oh, all that for that. All that for that. You hit yeah. two, two nice ones. Yeah. Uh, one, two.
Uh -huh. That's a good, good point. As you can see, I'm only using two hands when I have to here. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, I'm not in a position where, where I uh, am uncomfortable with my one-handed back end. I'm just doing everybody a good deed here. But, good Samaritan. <laughs> Uh, but in this scenario, I mean, obviously I'm going to drive with two hands, I'm going to drop with, with two, and then once I get up, once I'm out of that equation, right. then I'm going then, then to go to one. Yeah. I think we're still at 2-1. Yep. Okay, I like it. Up to it. Nice. Oh, no, it was wide. It was wide. It was wide. Yeah! <laughs> uh, two all. <laughs> You seem so excited when you earned your right to use one hand. I'm that not using great. two anymore. That was great. <laughs> Score? Twos. Jeez. What does it take to win a point <laughs> on here? <sighs> oh, no way. Okay, I'm taking it. No way. Twos. Stupid ball. Stumbling and mumbling. Uh, ah, ah, too good. good. Too good. Ah, Last good one. Stuff. Winner okay. take. Either way. Two two. Yeah. Ah. Uh, 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 oh, too good. Too good. Too good. Winner. Too good. Winner takes it. Next person to score. Winner we takes go. it. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, guys, game recap here. We were working on the two-handed backhand. Um, uh, so the game situation was it was uh, uh, regular scoring. Uh, the, the returner was more so returning from the kitchen line. It was nice and cooperative. The server at the baseline uh, had two situations. They had to drive the two-handed backhand on their third, and then they had to drop the two-handed back in on their fifth, and then we, we were to play the point out. Only time the returner can, can score points or score two points is if the returner lets the drive go long. Yeah, as far as tactics, guys, go, um, I think, you know, for the initial drive, I think the mindset's the same, whether it's a forehand or backhand drive. You know, you want to make your opponent volley. You want to ideally hit your drive well enough to where maybe you'll get a volley that's going to land midway or shorter in the court to make your fifth shot drop a little bit easier. If they're able to pin you back with a really good first punch volley, definitely makes your, your job a little bit tougher to get in. Uh, and then the other mindset as far as being up, um, yeah, as early on in the point, you want to really try to get that extension on that first volley, uh, try to keep your opponents back. And I think the big thing is, is as you feel them come in, don't take the bait and try to do too much with balls that are in yellow or in red. Maybe you can take it out of the air, but when you feel them come in, there's nothing wrong with surrendering and saying, listen, I'm just gonna dump it because I don't wanna hit up and, and, and wear this next one as a tattoo. I'm just gonna dump it over the net, realize you're gonna be able to neutralize, but you still haven't beat me in the point yet. Make them beat you in a long, hard fought dink battle uh, in, in order to actually uh, get a point from you. And I think like hearing Kyle's situation and also too hearing stories from other players, um, I think if you're going to commit to the two-hander, fully commit. You've got to trust it. You've got to use it with your drops. You've got to use it with your drive. You've got to use it as, as you dink. Uh, you're going to find more consistency with being a little one-dimensional, uh, with, with uh, just being more consistent in general with using that two-handed backhand. Yeah. One of my biggest regrets, I had a two-handed backhand in tennis. I regret when I came over to pickleball initially, I regret not just uh, using my two-hander from the start for everything. As I've tried to bring it into my game after being you know, more of a, a pro level, 5 level player, it's been really tough to figure out when is the right time, when isn't the right time, and that indecision can really hurt you. It's, you're better off just committing to it all the way and, and, and sticking with it.